In this video, we're going to talk about calculating fields with gravity forms. Now, there's two different types of calculation that gravity forms can do. And what I mean by that is there are preset fields in gravity forms that calculate automatically. And then there are fields in gravity forms that we can use to calculate. And I'll show you what I mean by that. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a new form. And this would be, for example, a product order form. And if I click create form, because there are fields in gravity forms already that are set up to do something like a product order form, and that has automatic calculation built in. And I'll just show you what I mean. If I click on pricing fields, I can create a product. And under my options here, I can determine whether it is a single product or if there's drop down or radio. So if there's multiple options for the different products they can purchase. I can also put in a field for user defined price and this would be handy for example if you're a charity and this form is going to be for donating a certain amount of money if I didn't want to have preset values I could have user defined price or if you're doing something similar to like humble bundle which is a games developer they have basically you can choose the price that you'd like to pay for the bundle of games so something like that and we can also put in calculations and, and different things like that, but I'll show you that later on. So for just for this example, for our product order form, we're gonna leave this as a single product. And let's just say that we're selling widgets. And then we can put in a price down here, which is gonna use the currency that I entered in when I was installing. So let's say it is 50 check crowns. And then what we can do is we can either enable or disable the quantity field because we have a quantity field that we can use or we can have one in line. So for now, let's disable that for now so I can show you this field as well and we can make that required. So what this does is this creates a base product for our form. So this is the base of what our calculations are gonna be uh, set upon. So we put a price here and then our next option is we'll add in a quantity field so they decide how many widgets they would like to purchase. And we can also put in a min and a maximum number and some other options here. And we select which product. So if we have multiple products, we can assign which product this quantity field should apply to with this drop down. And then we can put in different options. So let's say that if we wanted to have a, uh, let's say it's small, medium, and large. So let's say that our small, what did we make our price? 50 crowns. So let's say that our small is 50, our medium is 100, and our large is 200. And then we'll go to our shipping field. So this would be a shipping cost. And we will have our shipping cost be 100. And then we have our total field. So let's update that form field. And now let's insert that into a page. Now basically what you can use this for is you can do this for a simple order form and you can use the extension from Gravity Forms either for PayPal or for Stripe. And you can actually use this form to sell items and you know have you know take people's money through PayPal or Stripe and do that kind of thing. Now I don't really recommend this. I mean I would recommend that if you're gonna be selling products, you can do it with something like WooCommerce and have an actual e-store for uh, you know shipping and taxes and inventory and all that kind of stuff. Even if you're only selling a couple products, I would recommend using WooCommerce over something like Gravity Forms. But if you did have a simple form where you were selling a simple product or a service and you just wanted an easy way for them to send you money, then this could be a good way to do that. So we'll just click on add form. I'll select my product order form and insert, publish my page. And now I'll check that out on the front end. So if I, I have my base price of 50 crowns. So right now my total is zero. If I put in one, it's going to, because I have a hundred crown shipping fee, I have a 50 crown price and my option small adds another 50 crowns to that. So these options are in addition to the base price, so keep that in mind. So if the small was 50, instead of 50, I would wanna put in my form, let me just go back here. 
under options for small, I would want to put zero crowns here, right? So if the options are adding, we want to put what we want to add to that base price, right? But for right now, I'll leave that. So we have 50 plus 50 is 100 plus 100 for shipping is 200. And if I move this to medium, then I'll have 250. If I move it to large, I have 350. You know, this can get a little bit more complicated when I'm, when I'm adding in multiple, you know, we have to add in multiple different form fields. So that's what I mean when I say it's better to kind of use an e-commerce system. But for a very basic payment form, this could be quite easy to set up and we can integrate that with PayPal or Stripe and it automatically calculates our total for us. And then we click submit. And if we had this tied into one of our extensions, which will have optional tutorials for all of the Gravity Forms extensions, then when I hit submit, it would redirect me to PayPal or whatever that would be. So that's our simple order form using the built-in calculating fields, but we can actually do a lot more than that with Gravity Forms and calculating fields, and I'll show you how. So for this example, let's say that we wanted to do a calculation which didn't necessarily have anything to do with money. Let's say that we wanted to calculate a score based on answers. So let's create a quiz form. And first we will just have a simple name field. I'll just use a single line text. And then we can use either our numeric field, obviously we can use those in our calculations. We can also use other things like our selection fields. So let's do a drop down field. And you're going to see here under my options for drop down, I have a little tick box that says show values. And this is what we can use for calculation. Now this shows text choices and this can be handy you know, if you're doing a form and you want to show them one option, but that option means something to you, which is different. So let's say uh, if we're running a camp and there's a couple different ways that's, that campers might transport to our camp, we could put car, bus, train, and under our value, it would be pick up at bus station, pick up at train station, right? So when people are receiving those emails, we want to show them the option. So that's one way, but we can also have a numeric value and then use those in calculations. So let's put in a question here and we'll just say who was the first president of the United States. And then we can do, you know, George Washington. And we can do Abraham Lincoln. And we can do King George, right? So those are our options. So for Abraham Lincoln and King George, since those are incorrect, we want to put zero. And for George Washington, let's say we give five points for every correct answer. So we would put five in there. So we do show values and we can add and remove options with these plus and minuses. And then let's put in a placeholder, something like please select an answer. And then we go back to our general tab and we can see, so we have our first answer here, right? So let me just duplicate that field and we'll do a quick second question. So, you know, what is two plus two? And our first answer again will be the correct one. So we'll do four, six, and one. And then we will click on update. So now let's add this into a page. Let's create a new, a new page and we'll say this is Gravity Forms Quiz. And we'll insert our form and click on publish and we will open this up. So now we have our two questions and we can say we'll have them put in our name and we will say, please select an answer. George Washington, please select an answer is four, but it's not actually showing the, the total on the front end. So let's say, for example, you wanted to show them the total. We could do a numeric field and we would say quiz total. And then on this checkbox here, we'll click on enable calculation, right? And we'll use these merge tags to add in the calculation of the two fields above. So we're going to do insert merge tag and we're going to go who was the first president of the United States plus what is two plus two, right? And then we'll update that field and we'll refresh our page. And you can see that quiz total is now zero, but if I answer my questions, now we're at five. If I answer my other question, now we're at 10. 
And if we didn't want them to see it, so we don't want them to see the field, so we can click on hidden. And what that means is it's gonna be hidden to them, but in our form results, when we get it, it's gonna show us the score. And this can be used for a lot of different things. It could be used for quizzes or tests or something like that. But in our next video, when we talk about conditional logic, we can actually have a result happen based on what that number is. So you can use this for a lot of different things. So in the beginning, we talked about our product order form fields. So those are the built in fields from Gravity Forms for order product, which has to do with currency. But we can also use uh, field calculation in gravity forms to come up with any kind of calculation. It could also it could it could be money. You could create a product order form using these fields, and you can see a lot a lot of them have the ability to be used in calculation. Anything that can have a numeric input can be used for calculation, and we can get that total. And when we talk about it in our next video, we can use conditional logic to then have some kind of result happen, whether to show or hide fields or to give them a different message. And I'll show you that in a little bit. But this is just a very basic example of what we can use our form fields or our calculating fields for. Um, so I'm seeing this total field because I'm logged in. I'm an administrator, which means I can see everything. But if I was logged out and looking at this field, I would not see this total. And so I would not see what my score was. But when I submit this, it's going to tell me what that score is on the back end. So if I just do enter in a name and I hit submit, then I can go to my form entries. And I will select my quiz form. And you can see that it shows me the questions, it shows me their answers, and it shows me what their total is and I can always see it again I can always see that field because I'm an administrator but for your users if they're log if they're not logged in and they don't have administrator access they would not see that total field and we can also I'll just go back into forms quickly and go back into my quiz and so if I go back into my form you can see that you can really get as complex with this as you'd like it can also be used for very simple quizzes or other kinds of calculations and that's going to tie into conditional logic, which I will show you in the next video.